Hey guys, Lynn here from Maker's Lane. My wife runs her own business online, selling various crafts. She's very crafty, very creative. And saying that, she asked for my help on a recent project she started working on. She just recently started making these cups. They are a piece of fabric. You put some Maj Posh down, a couple layers of that, and then you put an epoxy layer over top. Well, when you put the epoxy on it, it's supposed to be self-leveling, so this needs to rotate so that the epoxy stays on the cup and doesn't just all drip off. So it has to rotate at about 5 RPM, somewhere in there. After a couple iterations, I came up with this. All that's to it is a motor that spins, you got your shaft coming out, this is a pool noodle which actually holds the cup on it, like that, and you want something that kind of expands. So it's got the pool noodle and the rod, and then the reason I didn't just come off the shaft, there's a lot of weight out here. I just added this so that all the weight is off the motor. But I mean, it's a super basic design. The only thing, she came back and she said, one cup at a time isn't enough. You know, I'm selling a bunch of these. I need to, I need to have more running at the same time. I didn't have any motors lying around, so I went on Amazon and got these guys. And I'll put a link in the uh, description below. But three of these are, I think, right around like 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks, somewhere in there. And basically all they are is low RPM motors that go off of 110. So they plug basically directly into the wall. I'm going to really take this design, times it by three, and then add, you know, little things like I'm going to put switches on there so each one can turn individually. Basically, all you need is you need the motors, obviously. So we got three of them, three switches to control them. We got some wire plug for the wall. We got the pool noodle, more rod. And I, I'm going to go into depth on actually how I made this work in there. Got some scrap wood and we got some screws. There's the drill bit for this. This is the basics of what I need. Okay, so I was looking at my other design. It's way higher than it needs to be. To save on some material, I'm gonna cut these down to six inches. I need six of them. So one for the back and then one for the pivot point, the holder, whatever you wanna call it. So cut these down to six inches. So I got six pieces. Three will be for the back and three will be for the pivot point. So I have two different holes I have to cut. One's for the motor and then the one's for the rod. So the rod itself is an inch and a half. So I have an inch and a half Meyer bit. The motors are about two inches, so I'm gonna use this. So now two inch holes, an inch and a half. All right, well, the holes are cut, I guess. Now to mount the motors inside the hole. So let's get these mount them to a base plate okay so i think this is how i'm gonna mount them so the wires from these guys will come out the back end this will basically fit flush against the back so i'm put another board along the back to hide all the wires with three buttons haven't really figured out how i'm gonna mount them so that'll be fun but that's my idea for right now so let's get these mounted and then i'll worry about this back piece I'm gonna work on how I want the wires to be routed. So I'm just gonna do a crude drawing of these circles. Okay. After I got all the holes drawn, I then marked where I wanted the wires to go. So the wires have to feed through those holes because the wires come out the back like that. So they come out the back of the holes, they go into the slot and then they're all going to come out this end. So all the three wires will come out this end, connecting to this plug. So now what I need to do to this board is drill holes all the way through the board here, here, and here, so that these buttons can come through and fit through here so that they sit like this. I don't actually need this part, so I'll cut those off that way. I can fit them in here flush 
and they won't get in the way of anything. So next time you see this board, it'll have holes in it. And there you go, it has holes in it. So now you can take this and draw the outline of that, route the inside of it so it sits sit in there, sits in there flush. Should look a little something like, so now the switches fit in here like that. All right, so let's work on the wiring and then we can mount this to the back of there. Because these holes are so tight, it can bind up, especially if you get some weight out here, it doesn't like to turn. So what I do is I go on my lathe and cut off just maybe eighth inch total. That way it just has a little bit more give in here. And then I will drill a hole in these dowels and then put a pin in so that it locks to the shaft. So the next step is gonna go be put these on the lathe, actually cut them into three sections, put them on the lathe, and then attach them to the motors. Okay, so here they are. Put through the lathe so you can see the channels cut in so it fits in there pretty nicely. I also went ahead and just drilled a hole for the shaft, drilled a hole for, for the pin to hold it to the shaft. Put them on here now. So all I'm using for a pin is this brad nail. You can use anything coat hanger would work. Just basically anything to keep it from the shaft from moving. And boom. Okay. It seems like I'm having an issue with this motor. I think there's something maybe wrong with it. It doesn't seem to be engaging, but other than that, everything works great. So the last thing we need to do is actually add the pool needle, pool noodle to the end. I'm going to cut it a little bit long. I'll probably cut them six inches for each one of these. All right, so here's the pool noodles. So if you look, the circle there, that's a lot bigger than that, which means it'll stay on here. But at first it's a little bit difficult to get it on there. set up it's got all three of the cups on so here's the old one it has a cup on it too we're getting ready to pour the epoxy on it so basically this is how shiny it will look when it's done this is what it looks like before it's kind of got it's still shiny but it's kind of more kind of matte finish to it so yeah they all all work had a had a bug with this one earlier and it was an alignment issue so that is something you have to watch out because if it binds up, these motors, they don't really have strength. So they'll just like keep turning back and forth if they can't get what they want. This is a little bit more complicated. You could even go more basic and uh, not even worry about putting an on off switch. Just plug it directly into the wall. There's uh, there's not a whole lot to them. It's your basic uh, epoxy cup turner. If you guys have any questions about anything, just let me know. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, tell me in the comments below and I'll try and do some more stuff like this. Till next time, I'm Lane from Makers Lane. You guys have a good one.